I've been married for seven years now. And when I think back to our wedding, there's a few things I regret. Luckily, not being married to my husband, but we did a destination wedding and I absolutely do not regret that. I'm gonna share a whole experience with you. I'm Julie Bauer-Roth, the food, fitness, and lifestyle blogger behind PaleoMG. Welcome to my channel. I'm here to share my favorite food, workout, and wellness tips to help you live your best day in life. And today we're talking about love. Love's the best, right? It's the best. Well, I fell in love with my now husband about 10 years ago. Yeah, 10 years ago. And we got married back in 2016 and we did a destination wedding. And I wanted to share that entire experience with you because if you are looking to get married and you're trying to outweigh your pros and cons with your destination wedding versus getting married at home, well, it can be hard to figure out what's best for you. Maybe you just know with your gut. At least I knew with my gut and Brian did as well. When we got engaged, the night we got home from our engagement, which his engagement was so freaking awesome, we got engaged in a clock tower and it was an incredible surprise. Well, when we got home, we're like, okay, well, where do we wanna get married? And it was both just like, we're doing a destination wedding, right? There was no question about it. So luckily we were on the same page with that. We wanna do a destination wedding and now we just gotta pick where. Now we had had a couple friends in the past get married in destination weddings. Brian had been to one in Jamaica and I had been to one in Mexico and we were trying to see if we could do somewhere different. So we didn't wanna do Mexico because we had just been to one in Mexico and we wanted to maybe do Costa Rica because we love Costa Rica. I had been there before. So we're like, okay, let's look into Costa Rica. But the more we looked into Costa Rica, the more we noticed the, we probably have to drive a long amount of time. After you got to the airport, it'd be like a four hour drive to the places we wanted to go. So we decided we didn't want to do Costa Rica and we shifted our gears and said, how about Jamaica? And the way we came to this conclusion was we use a destination wedding planner, I guess you could call her. So she was recommended through a friend. They used her for their destination in Mexico. So we used her as well. And she talked about different places that we could go that wouldn't make a ton of travel time and would be kind of in the budget that we wanted to spend. So we were looking into Jamaica in a different place than Brian had been to with a previous destination wedding. We were looking into Montego Bay. And since Brian and I don't want to think too much about things, it's just like, okay, we wanna just have it planned and done. We said, Jamaica it is, let's go. Now, what was great about this wedding planner, I guess you could call her, is she sent us different hotels. So I really would recommend if you're going to do a destination wedding, finding a person who plans this out for you because it takes all the stress off of you. So she sent us a bunch of different hotels in Montego Bay and she sent us the hotel prices for the rooms, but then also what the price would be for the wedding and then what the wedding looks like. With many of the different hotels, they had different options to choose from. Maybe wedding option A and wedding option B. And B would have way more food. It would have different table settings. It would have a photographer included while A was just kind of minimal. And some just didn't have any information at all. So when I looked at all these different hotels, I picked the hotel that had the best written out experience of what the wedding could be like. And I had A, B, and C options to choose from. So I loved that this hotel had really beautiful beach. It had great rooms. It had a ton of different restaurants. So all of our guests would be entertained. But then with the wedding options, it had everything written out like they had done this many, many times over. And so it felt really comfortable with them. After looking at all of these different hotel options and wedding options, we chose Secrets Resorts in Montego Bay. Then we made our guest list. So we started writing out all of our different people that we wanted to invite. And we knew many of those people would not come. Obviously, when you have a destination nation wedding, it's going to cost money for them to come. They're going to want to really make it work. People have kids, people have jobs. It makes it very complicated. So we made a list of probably around 80 people. We sent invites out and we did it very minimal. We sent an email invite. We did not send wedding invites in the mail or save the dates. We just sent an invite via email. It was like, Hey, do you want to come to our wedding? And I know maybe this sounds super, lax, 
but that's how we are. I don't care about making invitations and spending the money on that. People work through email these days. So here's our email and we sent it out to 80 of our friends. Now we had 29 people come. Brian's family was there, my family was there. And when I say my family, my parents were there. I don't have a big extended family, I'm an only child. Brian has a brother and sister and his mom was there. And then we had all of our close friends who were in the wedding party, they came. I had a bridesman and then three bridesmaids and Brian, I swear, had like 14 groomsmen. It was like two guys to one girl or my guy friend. So it was a big wedding party on his side. I just don't have that many friends. <laughs> Preparation for the wedding was so easy because we had this destination wedding planner. She did everything. She talked to all of our guests. She booked the rooms for our guests. She booked the travel, the airfare for our guests and us and sent them a breakdown of different airfare that they could purchase. She did it all. And then she also talked to the hotel. So it was so hands-off, which I appreciate. I have lots of other things I wanna do. The last thing I wanna do is spend my days planning a wedding when I still have to work and get stuff done on a daily basis. So she did it all. The only planning I did was a few emails back and forth with the hotel, letting them know that I would have a certain amount of bridesmaids there, what I wanted to do the day of. Did I want to have like food in the hotel? I had my wedding dress. I wanted to get that steamed, that kind of stuff. Having a separate room for Brian so he could get ready. We talked about those minimal things, but we really didn't talk that much until we got there. I picked out the flowers that I wanted for my bouquet and i honestly was like do i even have to carry a bouquet i didn't even care about that and then those flowers were on the tables as well but i didn't care about like crazy tablescapes i think nobody notices that stuff i mean some people do i'm sure or if you're at like a million dollar wedding i'm sure you notice the tablescapes but if you're at an average wedding you never notice that stuff i never do i can't think of any of my friends even my best best friends I'm thinking of my best friend who got married in Puerto Rico. I can't remember the tables at all. Like, oh yeah, we ate in a restaurant. I literally can't remember that stuff. People don't think about that. They just think of the time that they had at the wedding. So that really wasn't important to me. What was important was having hors d'oeuvres, having snacks, having plenty of food, an open bar. I wanted my friends to be able to drink and not have to pay for anything. And I wanted there to be gluten-free cupcakes and lots of food at dinner. That's all I wanted. That was it. So we just made sure that we picked the package that had the most food available. And I think that was package C. I was like, yeah, I just want lots of food. And that was the most expensive package, but it still wasn't that much. So we chose that and that's all I had to do. Choose the package, choose the flowers, talk a little bit with the staff, and then it was hands off until we flew out to Jamaica to get married. Now, something I did because I'm not huge into photos was we just used the in-house photographer. We'll come back to that in a little bit, but we used an in-house photographer versus bringing our own. A lot of people bring their own photographer or maybe reach out to the area and shop around different photographers who live in that area. I just didn't care. So I was like, eh, hands off in-house photographer, that's who we'll use. Now let's talk about the cost of everything. This was seven years ago, so I've forgotten some of it, but I know that with Brian's suit, with wedding dress, with bringing outfits out there, with airfare, with our stay for eight days, I think we stayed over a week, hotel, all the food was included in the hotel, that cost us $15,000 for our wedding, for our photos, for our food, for our drinks, because all the drinks were included at this hotel. We did an all-inclusive hotel just to make it really easy for people. Everything for seven, eight days, air for, like I said, was $15,000. So to me, when I had seen many of my friends get married here in Colorado, where you're gonna have way more guests who can come, where you have maybe more options because you know at a hotel i have a b and c but if i'm here getting married in colorado or you're getting married in home state you have a ton of different options there might be a ton of different places to get married and lots of different food options to choose from lots of different photographers there's so many endless options well in jamaica it was like you have a b or c and that's what you pick 
and maybe that feels constrictive to some people, but to me, it just made it so much easier and so much cheaper. Because my friends who got married with a minimal wedding here in Denver, where most of their friends could come, they were spending $50,000 or more. And that was for one day, one day. And we got an entire week, a huge vacation, being with all of our friends, a catamaran trip, we did the different excursion type stuff, everything cost us $15,000 at the end of the day. And so it saved us so much money in the end. Now let's talk about things I would have done differently. Swing back to this photographer. Now I looked at the photography beforehand and I knew this was not the best photographer in the world. I knew the photos weren't going to be anything spectacular. And a lot of people want that on their wedding day to have this, you know, print and video and everything. But when I was looking into bringing photographers out there, I was like, Oh my God, this is so expensive. Like paying for their airfare, paying for their stay, depending on the photographer, paying for all the photos, if we wanted to do video and all this sounded so cool, but we were going to spend thousands upon thousands of dollars extra. And I'm so glad we didn't choose this because we had just bought a house. So we had moved into a house and then our sewage line had collapsed. And so we had to spend tens of thousands of dollars one day, right before our wedding. This was two weeks before our wedding. We had to spend tens of thousands of dollars to redo our sewer line. So I was so glad we didn't spend the extra money on the photographer. It, we would have just been so strapped of our cash and it would have just been devastating. When they told me what we owed for our sewage line, I went into the bathroom and just cried because it was so close to our wedding. It was just really overwhelming. So I'm glad we didn't spend the extra money on the photographer. But I do wish now that we had better photos. And I, I think I wish that because now we have a daughter and I want her to see the photos of her mom and dad getting married and spending this special moment together. And now we just kind of have these like crappy pictures that we're not impressed by. We got a video and it's like the worst video in the world. It's hilarious. But that's what's kind of funny about it. It's just kind of funny looking at the photos that we're like, wow, this is terrible quality. And even though I don't regret it, I do kind of regret it just a little bit. Do I regret not getting maternity photos? Absolutely not. But I do regret not having photos of our wedding day, better photos of our wedding day. So I would have changed that. But at the same time, we just weren't financially prepared to change that at that moment. So it's not something I could really go back on. Number two on the list of things I would have changed. I would have eaten more. I, you hear this all the time with brides not eating because you get so excited. So after we got married, we went down on the beach and took photos on the beach. And that's when everyone went back and started having drinks and food and having hors d'oeuvres. So we didn't have any of those hors d'oeuvres and we were drinking champagne. And so boom, of course I haven't eaten that much that through the day because you're nervous and excited and everything. And then I'm drinking champagne. And then as a person who doesn't drink very often, I get to the party and I'm like, let's take shots. What a terrible decision. Shots are disgusting. Whoever thought was like, hey, let's just drink pure alcohol, shoot it back and call it good. What a psychopath, ew. Well, I got wasted, wasted. Honestly, I think that's the last time I've been incredibly wasted and that was in 2016. So. I don't ever want to drink again after that night. It was warm vodka shots on the beach. We got married on the beach. Our party was on the beach. Dancing was on the beach. The music was so good, but there was all this food around. There was so much food. We had this great buffet. The food was amazing. We had gluten-free chocolate cupcakes and I didn't eat any of it. I had a couple bites of food and then I just wanted to dance. I wanted to take drinks. I wanted to be with the people who took the time, the money, the energy to get to Jamaica and watch us get married and support us. I wanted to party with them. Well, guess what? A girl who doesn't drink gets to 9 PM. It's done. We are done. Okay. So then I'm in the bathroom in our hotel. I can't get my dress off. Brian's trying to help me so I don't vomit on my dress. And I'm like, you don't know how to do it again, Laura, my best friend. So she's in here trying to get my dress off. It's just a whole mess. And I'm like, 
in the hotel room at 9 p.m. on my wedding night. And I've heard this happen to other people, but that's my biggest regret is I did not eat. And you know what's the worst part? This is the worst part. They did not bring those gluten-free cupcakes because those were leftovers. There was a cake. They had a cake for us so we could cut into it. They did not bring that back to my room. Why wouldn't they do that? Why wouldn't they say, here are your cupcakes, ma'am. We know you're wasted and you could eat these at night. They didn't do that. So that's number three on my list of regrets that I didn't ask them to bring the cupcakes back to my room, okay? But mostly I didn't eat. So the party continued on without me. My mother-in-law took it to the club because there was a club on the hotel premises where nobody went to. So my mother-in-law went to the club and was dancing on the bar top, okay? She was dancing atop the bar and I missed it because I was vomiting in our room. And I woke up with truly the worst hangover of my life. Then we said, yeah, let's bring us breakfast in bed. We're laying there in bed. I want to die, shrivel up and die because my hangover is so bad. And a guy comes in with a tray on his head and he begins to sing. And he continues to sing and you think it's over and you're about to take a breath and then he continues to sing with a raging hangover, okay? I'm in bed thinking I'm gonna vomit with a raging headache, hangover. This guy is singing in my face and then he opens it up and it is one A. I was like, get me to the bar now. I need any sort of grease, give me potatoes. I need green chili on top. I don't know what it is, but I don't need one single cold egg that was given to me by a guy who just serenaded. It was rough. So next time I wouldn't get breakfast in bed, I would go straight to the bar, straight to the buffet, you know, get in that buffet line, get it all loaded up. But those are my main regrets. I regret not having a photographer, even though we couldn't afford it. So what's the point in regretting that? And I regret not eating, not eating a full meal and then taking shots on top of it. It was a terrible decision because I missed half of our wedding. Our wedding continued on without us. Well, Brian tried to go back out, but then he had to come back and help me, but it continued on without us. And that was very sad to me. And I regret that and I wish I could do it over. Now, pros and cons. There are obviously so many different pros and cons depending on the person. Pros, it eliminates the people who don't wanna be there for you. Cons. It eliminates some of the people who do wanna be there for you. Maybe you have older grandparents who cannot travel. I know that was a deciding factor for many people. For me, I didn't grow up close to my grandparents. They never lived by me. So it wasn't a deciding factor. I wouldn't even necessarily invite them because they haven't been a huge part of my life, even though they're my family. For other people, their grandparents are super close to them. They're, you know, like, parents to them. That just wasn't a deciding factor. So to me, it eliminated the people who didn't want to be there. And we had a couple people who were like, man, that's sad that they're not going to come. Or I wish they could come, but I could understand why they wouldn't. So there were a few of those, but at the end of the day, it eliminated the people who didn't really want to make the effort to be there or couldn't be there. And it made it cheaper. That was a pro to me. Now, another pro I think was getting married and having a week long with your friends. With a normal wedding, you have one night where you spend a ton of money and you barely get to hang out with everybody. Well, me who got wasted and had to be in bed by nine, well, I didn't have to regret that as much because I had the rest of the week to party with them. We got there on a Sunday, the wedding was on a Tuesday, and then we were staying the rest of the week and then some, and we had all this time to enjoy with our friends and talk about the wedding and go on a catamaran trip and just enjoy time with them. So it really was a huge pro that I got extended time with the people I love the most. And honestly, I can't find any con with that. I get a vacation out of it. I get a wedding out of it. I get time with my friends, all an extended amount of time instead of one night. Seems like an incredibly big pro to me. Now, honestly, I'm trying to think of any other cons and I can't think of any. I loved having a destination wedding. The only thing I would change are the two things I talked about, but everything else was great. The location was perfect for our wedding. Having all our friends there, our close friends was perfect. The food was amazing. The photography, not so good, but everything was perfect. 
and I would do it all over again. And then I'm hoping in our 10 year anniversary, we do another type of destination wedding and just celebrate 10 years together. We wouldn't go back to the hotel that we stayed at. We just feel like we have already done Jamaica and we wanna go somewhere else. So we'd probably go somewhere in Costa Rica because there's so many different areas we haven't explored in Costa Rica. Maybe go to Italy, do something there. But I would do a destination wedding all over again. Whenever anybody says like, oh, we're thinking destination wedding, I say, do it, do it. It is so nice. And everybody's destination wedding experience is different depending on where you book. Sometimes you have to be more hands-on. And if you have more of a vision of what your wedding is gonna look like, maybe you have to bring things to make it look a certain way if they don't have those things at the hotel. But I didn't have any of that vision. I just wanted to get married on the beach. I just wanted to hang out with friends. I just wanted to enjoy a week long vacation somewhere. That's a dream wedding to me. It's not one day here in Denver, it is somewhere far away and enjoying a beautiful view with my toes in the sand. That is what I see as an amazing wedding. I can't recommend a destination wedding enough. It was one of the best days and I can't wait to just have a 10 year anniversary with him to hopefully celebrate all over again now with our daughter, which is pretty cool. But I'd love to hear from you. Did you do a destination wedding? Did you have a good experience, a bad experience? share your thoughts below. I've never had anybody have a bad experience. So I'd love to hear your thoughts and your experiences. So share that in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. And I have a couple more coming up, so stay tuned.